Welcome to Lost Culture, your one-stop destination for everything pop culture. My name is Aston and I'll be your host for today's episode of Lost Movie News. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. And as always, let's jump right into the news stories. So our first story of the day is Trolls 2. So Trolls 2 has been picked up for a second film and already they have a release date, April 10th, 2020. So we got a couple years before this film actually comes out. And what can I say? Can I say I expected this? Yes, the first one did well. The first one wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I took my daughter to go see it. She enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. I think they missed the moment though. I wish they would have played, um, I wish Justin would have seen Cry Me a River. The whole time I'm in the theater, I'm waiting for Justin to sing Cry Me a River and I never got it. It was even a perfect chance for him to sing it, but <sighs> it didn't happen. Like, but besides that, we don't have a director yet. We don't have a cast yet besides JT and Anna Kendrick. It's going to be like, I'm hoping that it sticks closer to the first one. I hope they're not, they find like a new enemy to come um, to do it. Hopefully they don't just recycle the same story and put it out. But knowing that it is a kid's story, they might do that. And uh, what can I say? Like, it's, uh, what can I say? Uh, Ugh. Now, um, that's what I have for this story. Moving on to our next story, we got Beauty and the Beast. So, Beauty and the Beast, Disney's create like, live action version, is actually going to have Disney's first openly gay character. Now, it's going to be portrayed by Josh Gad. If you don't know, Josh Gad is playing Le is playing Lefay. So. LeFay is going to be an openly gay character. I don't think they said it's not just going to be some little throwaway scene. It's actually going to be. Like they're in the movie and they're actually going to um, kind of discuss it, I guess. So I guess for other people that was petitioning for Disney to have some reputation for the LGBT community, here you go. Like, here you go. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm not saying, here you go. Here goes our first gay character. And he's going to like lead the way, hopefully, for more characters to come out. Because... There's always characters that people can play up as gay in Disney movies. There's always a couple of them. But this one I see can actually work because if you ever seen Beauty and the Beast, the way LaFay looks at Gaston, it could be a little suspectish. But there, like, there we go. So now they're actually going to give him that backstory as of him being a homosexual character. And he's actually, I wonder if he's actually going to be attracted to Gaston. Cause you know him and Gaston spend a lot of time together or not. But that would be, I'd love to see how they handle this and see if they're actually going to go overboard with it. Or is it just going to be like, because like Gaston's, Gaston's character isn't defined. Well actually it is kind of defined that he likes girls. Because that's all he does, like seeing the girls and stuff about how girls want him. But hopefully, like... They try to handle it in a way that's natural and it's not just about him all being gay. That's, that's like my big thing about it. But besides that, I don't mind a gay character being a Disney film. Um, I'm, not, like, I'm not saying that you should just go out and like, find characters to make gay. But with characters like LaFay, it actually like lends himself. Like that character lends itself to actually telling that story. So I respect what they're doing. I actually, and I like the way they went about it. Like nobody even like nobody even thought of um, Gaston. I don't know, Gaston Lafay was going to be gay in this movie until Disney recently came out and did an interview. I think actually Josh did an interview and explained about this character being gay and everything. And I like how they're handling it. They're not pushing it like the movie comes out in like, like two weeks and they're not even pushing the fact that they have a gay character. This is something Josh happened to talk about in one of his interviews and it came out. And I don't know how big of a story is going to actually be, but. I reported it. I think that's great that they're actually having representation in Disney films now. And that's all we have for that story. So it's Wednesday, so today is going to be our flashback day. And what do we have today? So we have a couple flashback movies today. We have The Number 23. We have Reno 911 Does Miami. We have Amazing Grace, The Astronaut Farmer. We have The Abandoned. So once the couple of films that stand out to me is the number 23 and Reno 911. I love Reno 911. Like, I still quote this movie today. Like, anytime I'm doing something stupid or something, like, you gotta treat it like a predator, not a prey, like a predator. And, like, this is like one of my favorite films. Like, I can't 
I can't believe this film was turning like 10 years old today. I remember like being in the dorms and just hanging out watching this movie. Like, back. bro, there's so many stuff. Like, me and my friends is just, bro, like this is. <laughs> I just think about the dumb stuff we did using these movie quotes from Real 911. Now, number 23 sticks out to me. I remember this like when Jim Carrey went to that little um, hotel and started seeing all like the little creepy visions and everything. I remember it not doing well, but when I looked it up, it had like a 6.4 in um, IMDb and everything. So I don't remember. I didn't look at the box office. I was looking at what film came out, but it's crazy that I didn't remember this film doing too good, but. Hey, Jim Carrey, I remember this strongly being for Jim Carrey. The Abandoned, I don't remember. I don't I don't really remember The Amazing Grace. I don't remember The Astronaut Farmer. So that's really all I remember is the number 23 in Reno 911. So with that being said, we're going to move on to our next story. Which is Wreck-It Ralph. So Wreck-It Ralph 2 has added Anna Ortiz. So Anna Ortiz is known popular from um, Ugly Betty. So I think it's a good addition on to the voice cast for Wreck-It Ralph. I love Wreck It Ralph. Um, was it uh, Wreck It Ralph? We had um, Fix It Arnold or Fix It Felix. That was his name. I love Felix, especially like when um, when Felix was locked up. He had the hammer, and all he had to do was hit the window one more time, and the window would have broke. But you know his hammer's up, only fixes. So he hit the, the little window, and the fix it like, bro. I love. <laughs> like I enjoyed Wreck It Ralph so much. It's been whoa. I don't know. How, was that 2011 when that came out? When did that come out? Bro, it's been a long time since Wreck-It Ralph came out. Oh my God, thinking about it. Um, the kids that seen it back in those days are a little bit older, so they might get them back in. They're definitely gonna get the families in for Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy it personally. I was a big Wreck-It Ralph fan. I'm hope, Hopefully, they keep Wreck-It Ralph 2 within the same vein as Wreck-It Ralph 1. Now, moving on from there, our next story is the animated Spider-Man. Um, this one is not going to be featuring Tom Holland. It's not even going to be featuring Peter Parker. This film is going to go on with Miles Morales. Now, for me, I'm kind of conflicted for this film for multiple reasons. Because what is the point of having two active Spider-Mans at one point? Now, they can do it. My issue is... Why are we having a live action Spider-Man and an animated Spider-Man at honestly the same exact time? It's it's a bit much. I know the animated one's probably gonna be for the younger cat like for the younger kids, but at the same time, they're still gonna get more adults and everything to come in just for the fact that the love for Miles Morales is deep. Like a lot of people didn't even want Peter Parker to be the new Spider-Man. A lot of people wanted, hey, just skip Peter Parker. And let's go with Miles, cause, and honestly, I was one of those people who would rather have a Miles over Peter Parker. But this is what we got. Like this is what we got. We got Peter Parker in the Marvel universe, and we got Miles who's living alone in this new animated world. And I'm, gonna, I'm wondering how they're doing it. Um, we have the director who's going to be Alex Harris. Um, his only other major like movie credit is the live action Pokemon movie, the um, Pikachu the Great Detective. I don't know how that's going to be. Um, I only remember Pikachu being a detective like in that one video game. Beyond that, I don't really remember Pikachu. Like I remember he's running around like he had like, a little trench coat, he had a little hat on, and everything looking like um, uh, I'm tripping right now. I can't even remember the name. Uh, <sighs> I don't know how I can't remember the name, but I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's an animated movie, so he's definitely going to have a lot more freedom, especially like with the um, with the live action Pikachu. He's definitely not going to be expected to be on the same level as a live action film. I'm just hoping it turns out a lot better. I, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely worried about this film because I don't know where it's going to sit at in the universe. How it's going to work? There's a lot of questions I have about this about this film. Now moving on to our next segment, we have Buy or Sell. So for Buy or Sell, our first topic of the day is Guardians of the Galaxy. So last night, Jimmy Kimmel knocked off, launched off a new trailer. We had got the teaser before, and like where, um, where, Drex, was just, um, where Drax was just drinking soup. And I was kind of upset that Drax, that trailer 
that, that scene anyway wasn't even in the trailer, which is it's just cool. But I love how they played up all they built all the characters up again this time. We see it must have been separated or something because we see like rockets up in the forest by itself. Um, we see Peter say like, "Oh, we gotta save the world again." So we see all that. We see what Nebula, Hondo, or Honda, Hondo, Hondo. We see they see everybody, and I really enjoyed this character. I love the teaser too. I like how the teaser set up. Like even though they're all aliens, and like even though they're all aliens and different species and everything, they're all humans at heart. So like the slurping soup thing is a normal thing. Like I get annoyed when people slurp soup. I know people that slurp soup. Like it's a normal thing to be annoyed by someone slurp slurping soup. That's just for the teaser. Now moving on to the trailer. I love this trailer. I love how they showed um I'm I'm assuming we're on the surface of Ego the Living Planet. Because you know Ego the Living Planet can actually change his surface. He can actually what he does is he lower people in with like like this nice colorful world and we see that they're playing with these bubbles and stuff. So he's obviously like they're obviously on Ego the Living Planet in my opinion, but we don't know where they truly are. We see um, who all was there. We see Mantis was there, and we see we actually to see Kurt Russell as Ego. We see he actually comes out, hit him with the Darth Vader line, like "I'm your father." Um, we see everyone like like shocked after the trailer goes off. But before then, we get to see Baby Groot. I love the scenes with Baby Groot. You see, like everybody seems like parents to Groot. We see when um when Peter's flying, like Groot, put your seatbelt on. I do that all the time with my daughter. We see, um, what else? We see when Gamora's fighting, we see Groot just sitting there just looking at her like, what should I do? She tells him, like, just run, just get, just get the safety. We see, like, and my favorite part of the scene might have been when Peter was heart, kind of heartbroken. He was like, oh, I see you using a gun now. Like, uh, is that a rifle? She's like, yes, you know what a rifle looks like now? Like, I just thought I used guns and you, you were using a sword. I guess we're both using Using guns now, like it's funny because like I do that, just, I do that stuff too. Like I was, I wouldn't be heartbroken, but I do stuff like that too to mess with people. But we see he does that. Um, Drax, we see Rocket. Rocket might have stole. Like my favorite part of the trailer was when like Rocket got surrounded, and then we see he has like he wasn't really like he wasn't really like set up. He was actually waiting for them. We see he has all the little needles popping off from every direction. This was an amazing trailer. It was an amazing trailer. And the crazy part is our day started off with another trailer. So our second trailer of the day, oh, I'm actually going to buy the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. And with that, I'm going to buy the trailer and the teaser. I'm going to sell if they had a teaser to the trailer, though, but I'm going to buy the footage they had in the trailer. Going on from there, Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant released a new trailer. They released a poster prior to buying the poster. Love the poster. Um... Going on from there, we got the, um, what else do we, for the trailer, it was just Xeno, Xenomorph, left. you get a Xenomorph, you get a Xenomorph, everybody gets a Xenomorph in this trailer. We've seen so many Xenomorphs in this trailer, bro. <sighs> bro, Planet of the Xenomorphs, and I love how it starts off, like, I didn't know these were, like, I figured they were, really, like, I figured they were all, like, in relationships and stuff, or circles and everything, because we saw them, like, grabbing hands and everything in the um, prologue. But when we get to the actual trailer, we find out everyone's actually in relationships. They're actually meant to go start a new, um, always, a, a new colony on this planet. And they're supposed to, like, populate it, basically, with themselves. And that's cool to see. Like, I think that's great. Like, we see this. They're the beginning of a, co of a colony. We see they get there, they find wheat, and that's when everything goes downhill. We see they find the engine. The, I'm glad they're tying in. I want to know how Prometheus ties in besides the fact that there's um, the engineer's little ship right there. Um, I want to know how, how these two tie in together. Because we know they canceled the Bloomhouse alien so they could do this movie. I just want to know how these two films tie in together. I want to know who that hooded figure was. Is it the same character from Prometheus? Maybe she made it there first? I don't know. Only time would tell. But besides that, I enjoyed this. This was an amazing, this was a great trailer. This was, this was a really good trailer also. I'm going to buy this. Now moving on to our final story of the day. 
we have Fate of the Furious. Now, they released a new poster, nothing else, no new um, trailers or anything. And I'm not really feeling this poster. Not really feeling the poster. Um, it's just, for me, I feel like it's just a regular Fast and the Furious poster. I, I, seen, I think I, it seems like they do this poster for every movie. The same exact poster. It's just my personal opinion. I mean, I just feel like we've seen this poster before. It seems very generic. It seems like this. I like how they played up the Vin Diesel and the Rock drama on on like on like set together. Like you see how they're facing each other, like angry and everything. But besides that, I just sell this trailer. I feel like we've seen it before. Ugh, I just wasn't feeling it. That that's really all we had today. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stop by our website to pick up one of our shirts if you want to. And as always, stay lost.